uh, 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 this is our second class and uh, in our first class uh, we just uh, uh, started discussion on the syllabus before that we uh, just introduce ourselves and uh, uh, you know we know uh, each other now i think uh, um, i should start discussion on the syllabus like uh, in the last class i told you that the whole syllabus of the company law is uh, divided into 11 uh, units or you can say 11 chapters uh, as, so far as the chapter first uh, chapter first is divided into three subtopic uh, and each topic has its own importance uh, the, uh, the first topic is company here we will discuss certain basic things I'm just repeating uh, so that uh, during this joining process, maybe it is a good revision for you. So the first unit or the first chapter has uh, three uh, subunit or you can say three uh, subtopic or three sub chapter. Okay, uh, so uh, just not to uh, confuse you, I will use only topic. So under first topic, there will be three subtopic. Under first subtopic. Uh, seven things we will discuss. First is what is the definition of the company as it is defined uh, by the different uh, uh, jurists, then the definition provided under the Company Act. The second thing we will discuss that uh, uh, this act or the statute that we will discuss is uh, passed by our parliament in 2013. And before that, there was another statute, the company's uh, uh, act. 1956. So, what is the difference between the uh, the provisions of the uh, 1956 and 2013 uh, Act? Then the third thing we will discuss the comparison between partnership, limited liability partnership, and the company because uh, company basically form for do the business, and there are other uh, you know entities also by which you can do business so what is the basic difference between these three things then the next thing is the formation of the company how companies form the fifth thing we will discuss is advantages and disadvantages of the incorporation and six is about the theories of the corporate personality so basically uh, the juristic theories like the break it theory etc and the seventh one is the company's uh, latest amendment or company amendment bill 2016 uh, but uh, 2016 now it is uh, very outdated the, so the latest development that happened or that is pending before the parliament we will discuss under this ad then the second subtopic is uh, theories of corporate personality and it is very very conceptual three things basically we will discuss the first is that company after registration became a separate legal personality and two important thing we will discuss uh, here the one is solomon versus solomon and company limited and the second one is lee versus lee air farming uh, uh, limited okay then the second thing that when we talk about that the company is a separate legal personality second question comes in mind that whether company is citizen or not and see uh, legal personality for uh, legal personality uh, it may be uh, any natural person or it may be through the creation of law but for citizen under article uh, 19 if you talk about of the constitution certain rights uh, given to the citizens but for citizen uh, you know person should be natural person living person like me and you okay and so a company cannot be citizen and there also we will discuss uh, some cases then the third concept is lifting of corporate veil as we know that as I'll, i already said that company after incorporation became a separate legal personality but certain uh, in certain situation this uh, veil of corporation has to be, uh, you know, uh, pierced or has to be uh, lifted to find out that uh, who are the actually the person behind this whole facade. And so 
the lifting of corporate veil here we will uh, discuss uh, two types of the ground one is uh, uh, you know the statutory ground in various statute you will find like the uh, environmental protection act uh, under the information technology act you will find that uh, the liability is not only to the company but actually the person who are at the helm who are actually working and so this uh, basically disregard the concept of separate legal personality because we said that you know company as a legal person through the law we has created but uh, you know the problem of the company is that it cannot work okay and uh, uh, only the real person work but the credit will be on the company similarly like we uh, teachers or other uh, you know employees of the university work but whole thing is on the university that university did this okay so similarly is on the company and in that situation where there is the circumvention of the welfare legislation or uh, there is some uh, you know the tax uh, theft or some others uh, 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 you know where real nature of the company has to be find out then in that situation uh, you know uh, the uh, the uh, veil of the corporation has to be lift out or the uh, veil has to be pierced usko hame lift karna like the one famous uh, case is uh, daimler company limited versus continental tire and rubber limited and if you know that in last class also i said that if uh, uh, for the public company seven person are required minimum seven person so if seven american or seven pakistani come to the india uh, if there is no restriction a specific restriction otherwise uh, maybe sometime the restriction with some specific nation uh, maybe it's possible so suppose uh, i'm changing from pakistan to uh, some seven american came to the india and form a company so the nature of the company that it will be indian company though the whole profit will goes to those seven person but Uh, because company is a separate legal personality and the company is separate from these seven person these seven person they, they the nationality of these seven person is american but the as far as the company company is not related to these person company is separate from it and because company is uh, registered in india so company will be treated as indian company but in certain time uh the real nature has to be find out and that was the situation during the second world war the, uh, the uh, you know a certain number of german person they form a company in uh, britain and you know at that time uh, under the rule of the hitler how the uh, germany was bombarding uh, you know on the uh, britain and so at, in that situation this case has happened but see the lifting of corporate veil or the piercing of corporate veil or you can say that disregarding that company is not a separate legal personality but it is same as the person like hum common parlance mein kehte na ki mukesh ambani ki company so basically that is reliance company separate from mukesh ambani but in common parlance we uh, or you can say in common language we use this term so similarly sometime you know we are disregarding that company is not separate from mukesh ambani so similarly when we disregard in the legal term or in the law the separate personality of the company that is known as piercing of corporate veil or lifting of corporate veil then uh, the third sub topic is kinds of the company where we will discuss different kinds of company that uh, i think you have heard it or maybe in the future you will uh, hear that like the public company that is defined under section 271 uh private company where the uh, for formation of private company only two members are required so that is uh, section 2 clause 61 uh, 68 sorry then the holding company and for that there is the section 2 uh, 46 then the subsidiary company section 287 limited and unlimited company Uh, to uh, certain company you have observed that after that ltd dot you have seen hindustan limited reliance limited so limited means the liability of the uh, members are limited one okay and so 
section 292 basically defines that then producer company section 2 clause 85 government company section 2 clause uh, 45 foreign company section 2 clause 42 any company that is uh, registered uh, other than india share holding and guarantee company uh, section 2 21 and section 2 22 okay clause 21 and 22 and there is a new concept that first time introduced by this new statute in 2013 is one person company opc section 2 clause 62 so that is thing all uh, these things we have discussed in last class now uh, to the topic second see uh, under topic second uh, we will discuss uh, <coughs> that when the when certain person want to form a company then they have to file certain important document like by which name this company will be known where the office of this company will be situated okay these important things they has to uh, finalize before registration and these uh, important thing has to be filed while a person go for the registration if you talk about uh, section 3 of the company act section 3 of the company act clearly says that a company is a company can be home just give me a second so that i can read it that a company may be formed for any lawful purpose uh, seven or more person where the company is to be uh, to be formed is to be public company two or more person where the company to be formed is private company or one person where the company is to be formed for one person company that is to say private company that means one person company will also be uh, considered as the private company for the uh, nomenclature of a public and private company okay now the question is that when section 3 enable the uh, us to form a company the second thing is that what are the requirements what are the documents that has to be filed and for that the two important document has to be filed before the registrar of the company where you will go for registration and the first document is known as moa or uh, that is a memorandum of association okay and the second document is article of association so our second topic is basically about these two documents and that is known as company's constitutional document Cons why constitutional document because these are the documents that actually constitute the company that actually limit the scope of the company like in india our constitution def defines that what type of country what type of democracy we will have like india will be democratic secular all these things that is uh, written into the preamble or that define the constitution so that is known as the, the constitutional document okay then uh, the second uh, topic this constitutional document this topic is also uh, subdivided into uh, three part okay so basically in the first part we will discuss uh, the section 4 memorandum of association that means what actually we have to write down in the memorandum of association the second is about uh, articles of association so here we will discuss section 5 okay and uh, uh, the next is certain provision related to alteration because even in our constitution we have article 368 by which the provisions can be changed uh, because uh, you know uh, law cannot be static with the time it has to be changed similarly there is the change so section 10 to 16 and any commerce student i think already aware that what is the memorandum of association what is its requirement as per the section 4 of the uh, company jack 2013 what is articles of association its importance clauses 
and the alteration of memorandum of association and article of association so uh, there is a little conceptual thing and that is the importance of these two document otherwise through the provisions we have to uh, read it there is nothing conceptual in it okay the second concept comes after this importance and that is the doctrine of ultra virus see as i said that memorandum of association uh, in memorandum of association there will be uh, many clauses like the name clause it will be like the members clause liability clause etc and in there one clause will be known as uh, you know the purpose clause uh, the actually the company has to be formed for certain purpose so what would be the purpose for which this company is uh, uh, formed <clears throat> so this is known as object clause i am telling you again uh, uh, yes uh, is uh, screen is visible can you see the screen yes sir yeah so see the first uh, topic we have discussed this uh, memorandum a memorandum of association and article of association section 4 section 5 10 then this doctrine of ultra virus so as i said that in memorandum of association there will be five clauses first is the name clause the second will be the uh, registered office clause the third will be the object clause fourth one will be the liability clause and fifth one be the in case the company have the share capital so the amount of share capital uh, with which the company has is to be registered so basically these uh, five clauses uh, will be in the section 4 uh, and with one person company there will be the another clause that if that person died so uh, in that case after this uh, death of the one uh, the person who formed the one person company who will subscribe so basically the five clauses will be there in the uh, uh, memorandum of association and the third clause that is the object clause so basically object clause is defined that for what purpose this company is formed the purpose is basically most of the companies is formed for doing business but it is not necessary because section 8 uh, talk about that even a company can be formed for the charitable purposes also okay certain person form uh, the ngo or society uh, etc but for the charitable purposes also you can form the company law allows it but for most of the companies are formed for uh, uh, business purposes but you have to define that what actually the object like whether because there is two purpose behind uh, defining well defining the object clause because when a company go for uh, uh, go to the public uh, then the people invest in the company by thinking suppose the company is uh, like uh, doing the business in the cryptocurrency and uh, maybe some of you uh, is of the view that cryptocurrency is doing well hmm? then after that uh, you know the company started doing the from the cryptocurrency to uh, selling the momos and then you thought that uh, your money is actually you know uh, misused by the company and so certain object has to be defined what will be the consequence if object has not been fulfilled so that is also uh, we will discuss that company can be uh, even wind up the registration is the birth of the company and uh, you know uh, the winding of the company is uh, the process by which company is uh, uh, goes to its uh, natural or you can say legal death okay so that object has to be defined and if company is uh, 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 you know transgressing outside its object clause then that activity for that activity company will not be responsible suppose uh, uh, the company business is uh, for laying down the railway line and then company started business of uh, uh, you know even uh, uh, selling the uh, railway bogies and in the object clause there is no scope of selling the railway bogies so 
द कंपनी इन्वेस्टेड मनी इन दिस रेलवे बॉगेज बिजनेस फॉर दैट द एक्चुअली द मेंबर हु टुक दिस डिसीजन विल बी रेस्पॉन्सिबल एंड कंपनी विल नॉट बी रेस्पॉन्सिबल दिस कैन बी अंडरस्टैंड बाय अनदर एग्जाम्पल दैट थ्रू द लॉ वी मेक दैट कंपनी इज ए लीगल पर्सन and the concept of legal person means that it ha it is it 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 has the duty and it is bound uh, you know even it is responsible or it liable for something liability we have imposed through the law but company cannot do itself because company uh, does not have hands and mind and so company work through the natural person and these natural person who are at the helm of the company director etc sometime they misuse the fund of the company and just to stop those misuse of the funds this concept of doctrine of the ultra virus and so in the second sub topic under topic second the doctrine of ultra virus we will discuss that what is the concept of the doctrine of ultra virus what would be its effect how it is applied and then very very classical case asbury railway carriage and iron company limited versus rich it is 1875 that's why it is classical case there are certain other cases also that you can see uh, that also we will discuss so that you can uh, you can be more clear that uh, how this Uh, object clause has to be interpreted because when there is a question that company uh, violated its object clause so there is always uh, you know uh, the discussion on the uh, interpretation of the object clause and then gradually you know the companies or these business person they are very smart and what they uh, did that they included many things in the object clause so if one object is not able to fulfill the company can do the business into the another activity so that company uh, uh, must not be stop acting and it must not be wind up but rather to do business in another activity and then certain uh, situation even uh, you know many other phrase is used by which the company can do business of any activity and so the judicial intervention was uh, done in many cases so all these cases that listed here are very very important and classical like cotman versus borgum inre john duforte london limited dial house limited versus city wall properties limited reintroduction limited versus national provincial bank limited and dr a lakshmani swami mudliar versus life insurance corporation of india well, this is one case from india last one it was from lic when uh, lic was formed so many insurance life insurance company were merged and the life insurance corporation of india was formed in that case one of the company uh, you know uh, spent the money in in a particular activity and the question was that whether that uh, activity is legally carried out under the object clause of the company or not so basically uh, the doctrine of uh, ultra virus is uh, is a safeguard for the company for not uh, misusing the company's fund for any type of uh, activity that is not uh, prescribed under the object clause and it also protect the shareholder shareholder can be assured that uh, uh, the money they, that they have invested in a particular company for with particular object will be invested in that particular activity only hmm. by simple example you can understand ki agar uh, automobile company hai like suzuki and you uh, purchase shares of that uh, suzuki motors so uh, aisa nahi aur aapko lagta hai ki automobiles mein you can earn the profit so it will company will do business only in automobiles okay the object clause mein likha hua hai ya usse related activity jo bhi hai theek hai selling maybe uh, like the opening of new showroom at sector at sector aisa nahi ki wo so, automobile se seedha hi wo airlines mein aa jayega ya liquor mein aa jayegi ya kya kehte hain usko beverages mein aa jayegi is tarah se nahi ho sakta so it protect company as well as the shareholder then the third is doctrine of indoor management and uh, again 
दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ इंडोर मैनेजमेंट दिस इज द थर्ड सब टॉपिक अंडर chapter uh, under topic 3 you can uh, 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 you know see here doctrine of indoor management uh, under c so from where this like i said that doctrine of ultra virus arises from the memorandum of association from the object clause from where the doctrine of indoor management arises basically it arises from articles of association like in the memorandum of association that is the con uh, Uh, in which basic important thing is written like the name of the company registered office uh, you know its uh, object uh, then uh, its members name and their responsibility similarly in the articles of association important thing where the company seal will be on all, all those uh, you know day to day affairs has to be written into the articles of association because when there will be a few persons and they will work together so all uh, definitely there is uh, chances of the frictions or uh, uh, you know conflict and these document are to uh, you know to resolve those conflict like you know uh, we have the federal government at one level we have um, um, central government or federal government central government hum zyada kehte federal nahi kehte and at the state level we have the state government and both these government you know government have three organ one is uh, uh, that uh, uh, legislature executive and we have unified judiciary not like the america where the for the state law implementation the state judiciary for uh, federal uh, you know uh, legislation there is a federal judiciary we have unified che wo ipc ka kanun ho ya state ka kanun ho same court can apply it same court can execute and try that thing okay so that is the difference but the my uh, concern is like we have in the government like at the parliament can also in a club for whole india or any part of india and the state assembly like haryana state assembly can make the law for whole haryana and any part of haryana now the question is that there may be the conflict that the center also made a law that have its effect on the haryana territory and center a state also make the law and just to avoid that conflict there is the list 7 where the three uh, schedule 7 where three list is prepared uh, center or you can say uh, uh, you know the union subject uh, state subject and the concurrent subject so similarly here in the articles of association many days to day things is written and when we will discuss in the detail we will you will find out that there are the certain a uh, format also that is form like for the public company private company etc uh, uh, you know i will uh, show you and accordingly you can prepare okay so binding nature of the articles of association between members and the shareholder uh, interest and also outsider okay and here comes that if anything written in the articles of the association then the person who is dealing with the company is presumed to know about it agar aapne law faculty mein kisi ko notice de diya to zahir si baat hai ki aap aapne wo padha ho ya nahi padha ho yahi presume kiya jayega like in the law in the ipc there is uh, ignore uh, ignorance of law is not excused so similarly here also if anything written in articles of association then it is the rule of the constructive notice that any person who is dealing with the company is supposed to read the articles of the association and there is another point about it because articles of association and memorandum of association are the public document and they you can find these document in the registrar office so aapne pehle deal karne se pehle aapko padhna chahiye tha so there is the rule of constructive notice and in this rule of constructive notice there is another thing like the uh, uh, the uh, you know a particular person is appointed but whether that particular person appointed by proper procedure or not for that outsider cannot know this is something within the domain of the company for which door is closed for outsider and that is that means the uh, uh, the exception of the constructive notice is the indoor management those activity that are not in the public domain that is uh, just the indoor activities or uh, the indoor management of the company for which liability of the outsider you cannot uh, impose 
and then there is that mean from a rule of constructive notice exception is doctrine of indoor management and there are certain uh, you know exceptions to uh, indoor management also and the, these exceptions are now getting uh, you know uh, what you uh, uh, relevance because maybe the person is out uh, maybe the person is outsider but actually if he is aware actually if he is aware in that situation how you can say that uh, uh, maybe maybe that uh, the activity within the domain of the company and it is not open for outsider but this person was uh, was uh, you know in fact knowing that thing then you cannot take the excuse of indoor management and here the uh, the, uh, the very classical case of royal british bank versus torquent many time it is known as torquent rule okay sometime the question asked that in light of royal british bank versus torquent rule defined uh, the do doctrine of indoor management with exception or sometime the problem given uh, the more basically problem we prepared from our cases also and that's why i always suggest student to go through each and every case that is provided in your case material uh facts will be by and large same as it is given maybe the name or some little bit change you will find out okay <clears throat> then uh, the next uh, you know uh, this thing okay then there are some two three cases also the freeman was and locker versus bukhas park properties and kotla venkata swami versus chinta ramamurthy so these uh, three sub topic there under the topic second then come to the topic 3 topic 3 is basically uh, you know about uh, cross okay this this was the topic 3 okay just uh, i discuss the topic 3 no issue the topic 2 uh, uh, is about the promotion and the formation of the uh, company so basically about uh who is the promoter and how the company is uh, formed so here uh, two things we will discuss one is about the promoters and second is about how factually or uh, you know uh, uh, technically the company is formed that procedure for the promotion first we will discuss that what is uh, uh, you know Uh, the meaning of promoter or you, you can say who are the promoters the uh, definition provided under section 269 and the uh, what is the position of the promoters vis-a-vis -vis to the company because promoters are basically those person who work together and uh, brought the company into existence so those person who before the company working for the company the person who who hired the chartered accountant who uh, you know uh, uh, prepared the memorandum of association articles of association arranged the fee and got registered the company after the registration by virtue of section 9 the company will come into existence and will be a separate legal personality but before that like our parents the promoters are in that situation and so what is the duty or the relationship these promoters have with the company that fiduciary relationship of uh, uh, these promoters have with the company so the uh, the uh, you know the relationship power of these promoters as a trustee of the company and uh, their rights uh, liability for negligence or liability if they got any personal uh, gain and here uh irlanger versus new sombrero phosphate company case very classical case where you know these promoters or the person who actually formed the company they got the personal gain some person uh, you know uh, got the lease of a particular island at a particular price like 100 rupees and then they formed the company and to company they sold this particular island to the 200 rupees so Uh, this type of the personal gain they have made and when the shareholder come to know then finally the question comes that uh, how these persons uh, can be make uh, responsible under which law and then 
uh, you know it was evolved that the relationship of the promoters with every company is uh, is the fiduciary relationship and th they cannot cheat the company they cannot uh, get the personal uh, you know profit or the negligence in that case there is the liability of the promoters then the uh, the second part the formation of company the procedure of the registration we will discuss and the effect of certificate of incorporation section 9 also we will discuss uh, so with this three chapter we have covered now come to the fourth chapter and the fourth one is uh, uh, it's not a conceptual chapter it's very small and uh, uh, many times question even uh, not ask for this topic but uh, for uh, you know our discussion we have to uh, you know cover this also it's about companies uh, share capital and debenture okay so uh, these three uh, okay here is the prospectus okay no don't worry so first time taking uh, this uh, uh, prospectus <laughs> and then company share and uh, debenture okay so in the prospectus uh, you know when a company uh, go for uh, public offering or ipo i think uh, you have heard it even uh, there is news that uh, uh, this uh, uh, you know life insurance also um, uh, will come with the ipo so when company go for public of so then the document has to be produced and that document must be very true account of the company so that the general public know that whether uh, or make a uh, you know good decision that uh, whether they has to uh, you know invest or not to invest and in that situation the question is that what is the prospectus Here, section two seventy uh, define the prospectus, and it's very, very uh, you know wide definition cover any type of uh, offering, uh, public offering under the uh, with you know with any garb that uh, actual the purpose is public offering is known as the prospectus. Then the uh, different kind of prospectus. One is abridged prospectus, deemed prospectus. Uh, so abridged under section two clause one deemed prospectus section twenty five self prospectus section thirty one red herring prospectus section thirty two and then the uh, you know uh, information memorandum uh, after the prospectus is formed then it has to be registered before the registrar of the company it will also become a public uh, document and uh, anyone can verify that uh, whatever is available in the market is actually the true account of uh, company or not so uh, then if there is any misrepresentation then in that case what what are the remedies so civil and criminal both remedies uh, are there some are uh, well uh, defined in the statute some are uh, actually evolved through the judicial decisions so that we will discuss then the next chapter is uh, company share capital and here uh, you know we will discuss first is the say what is uh, share capital share and debenture okay <clears throat> so uh, you know basically uh, the company that is registered with the share capital so that has to be defined as uh, i when i read this section 3 that uh, under section uh, no section 4 clause uh, uh, you know um, e Uh, that the company, if uh, you know, registered with the share capital, then that share capital has to be defined, and then uh, the division of the share capital into the uh, equal parts is known as one share. Okay, and debenture is you can say in the simple uh, uh, you know uh, language you can say that uh, that is debt on the company. So when there is a debt and the company issue some document of uh, Uh, that is acknowledging that acknowledging that that is known as the debenture so uh, the share uh, here we will discuss that uh, 
you know what is the meaning of the share and the different kind of the share equity share uh, preferential share and then the debenture section 2 clause 30 and uh, uh, what is the difference between uh, share and the debenture their nature section 44 makes that uh, uh, you know the share of the company are the uh, you know uh, movable property and if there is a movable property that can be uh, you know purchased that can be uh, sell out so by virtue of section 44 the uh, the share is uh, uh, sold out and uh, uh, yeah section 44 that share and debenture and other interest of any member in a company shall be a movable property transferable in the manner provided by the articles of the association and so uh, you know uh, the place where these shares are sold out and purchased is known as the stock market okay like the bombay stock uh, national stock exchange etc so <laughs> just this thing after that the the sixth chapter so these uh, uh, you know two chapter like the prospectus and company share capital and debenture these are very informative but not so much conceptual there are certain concept with respect to share and etc but not conceptual in the detail and even there are no cases provided here that we will discuss so in two three classes these two chapter we will cover it okay so first uh, you know three chapters are very very conceptual very very interesting lots of cases are there and they these first three chapter cover uh, you know uh, half of our syllabus if the uh, if a student prepare these three chapters so he can cover uh, half of the questions then the fourth and fifth, as I said, is uh, very, very informative, but are not conceptual, no cases is provided, no detailed discussion will happen. But definitely for a law, uh, company law student, one has to understand and uh, has discussion on this. Then uh, comes to the sixth chapter, and this is uh, somehow very conceptual. It is about uh, the directors. So, uh, the body of uh, all the director is known as the board of director and topic six is about uh, the board of uh, director here we will uh, understand that uh, uh, what is the definition that is provided here of director okay and uh, who is known as director the important thing is that like the promoters, what is the relationship of promoters vis-a-vis -vis to the company? Similarly here, what is the uh, position of director vis-a-vis -vis to the company? Because uh, the fear of the company is from the directors. Jo sabse paas hai, usi ke sabse bada, uh, uh, fear rehta hai. Like uh, mandir mein pujari hai, to pujari ko sabse, uh, bhagwan ko pujari se hi sabse jada khatra hai. So similarly, here is the director because director take the decision and in the law it is considered be decision taken by the company okay director do the things and law presume that company did that particular things and so there is uh, there must be some sound principle by which director responsibility can be fixed so that is the idea and so the question is what relation director have vis -vis with the company Again, it is a fiduciary relationship with trust and faith. And so, uh, you know, uh, the duties of the directors is defined in that manner as per the their relationship. And if there is a breach of that duty, then there is a civil and criminal liability. Along with that, there are certain other concepts uh, that uh, gradually evolved in this modern time. And that is... Uh, earlier it, you, it it happened that a person was in director in thousands of company or hundreds of company the position of director is to do uh, is actually to deliberate in the company's affairs and so a person can be uh, the director in the limited companies so that a limit is defined but how to check that is for that there is a uh, director's identification number this, uh, called as DIN under section 153 to 159 and this DIN basically is to check out 
लाइक अवर आधार कार्ड की ये डी है तो ये किस किस कंपनीज में डायरेक्टर ऑल दिस थिंग then there is another thing that uh, company uh, the director is basically uh, chosen uh, it's elected through the uh, in the <coughs> meetings and the person who has uh, more share will be uh, probably will be uh, come back as a director of the company and so the concept that company uh, also has to take some decision uh, without any biasness and so there is a the concept of independent director so the independent director section 272 clause 47 also we will discuss the liability or responsibility of independent director we will discuss and women director because women also has to be participate in the corporate world in the corporate world women representation is very low so that women director concept is also here with that uh, with cases we will discuss the live whether in particular case the decision taken by the director whether director will be responsible or not so that conceptual clarity is needed for this particular things with respect to fixing the liability of the director in that sense so uh, up to this we have discussed six topics and uh, what actually we will discuss throughout the semester in these six topic important cases also if there is uh that also we have discussed and uh, the emphasis will be that we will cover each and every case so that uh, every student uh, will be able to uh, solve uh, the problem asked in the examination so with this uh, today class is over i will not um, take your time because uh, you guys uh, i think will have next class also if you have any question any query with respect to today's discussion you are free to ask yes guys please mr mohit charashia hello sir yes sir. any any query question no sir i just wanted to understand briefly what is the doctrine of internal management briefly matlab do teen line mein बेसिकली uh, uh, जो हमारा आर्टिकल्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन जैसे मैंने बताया उसमें होता है कि भाई किस तरह से मैनेज होगा लाइक like, हो सकता है कि भाई कंपनी का जो चेक बनेगा उस पर मैनेजर साहब के साइन होंगे ठीक है आपको जो चेक दिया आपने कंपनी को कुछ सामान बेचा और आपको जो चेक दिया उस पर मैनेजर की बजाय डायरेक्टर के साइन थे अब क्वेश्चन ये है कि uh, आप ये रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी होगी कंपनी की या जो आपका डॉक्यूमेंट है वो कंपनी के अगेंस्ट यूज हो सकता है कि नहीं कि भाई वो तो जैसे आप चेक लगाओ उन्होंने कहा कि चेक हमारी कंपनी का ही नहीं है बिकॉज हमारी कंपनी की रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी तो तब होती जब ये चेक मैनेजर से साइन होता बिकॉज हमारे आर्टिकल्स के एसोसिएशन में ये लिखा हुआ है कि चेक तो मैनेजर ही इशू कर सकता है उनके साइन होने चाहिए अब क्वेश्चन ये आता है कि भाई आपका जो बना नुकसान तो आपका हुआ तो इसमें कंस्ट्रक्टिव नोटिस आ जाता है कि भाई आर्टिकल्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन आप जो आउटसाइडर है आपको पढ़ना चाहिए था देखना चाहिए था कि ये चेक तो मैनेजर से साइन नहीं है तो डायरेक्टर से साइन किया हुआ है डायरेक्टर के द्वारा इशू किया हुआ है तो मैं इसको क्यों लू ठीक है लेकिन कई बार ये होता है कि जो बंदा साइन कर रहा है मैनेजर का अब आपको क्या पता है कि उसका टर्म खत्म हो गया है कि नहीं हो गया है दिस इज इंटरनल मैटर वो उसमें भी नहीं लिखा हुआ आर्टिकल्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन में लाइक दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी का जो डॉक्यूमेंट है उसमें लिखा है कि वाइस चांसलर होगा और कोई वाइस चांसलर के नाम से कोई चिट्ठी आएगी तो आप उसको ट्रू मानोगे ठीक है नोटिस होगा लेकिन उस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट पे वो वाइस चांसलर है या नहीं है उसको आप नहीं पता लगा सकते हो सकता भाई दो तारीख को उन्होंने नेक्स्ट वाइस चांसलर ने नहीं ज्वाइन किया हो तो इसलिए जो है इंडोर मैनेजमेंट वो एक्टिविटीज है जिनकी जानकारी बाहर की दुनिया को नहीं हो सकता उस सेंस में जो कंपनी के साथ आप डीलिंग करते हैं फॉर दैट द डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्टिव नोटिस विल नॉट अप्लाई सो बेसिकली जब आप इसको प्रैक्टिकली जब देखोगे तो डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ इंडोर मैनेजमेंट है वो आउटसाइडर uh, जो कंपनी के साथ डील करते हैं उनके बेनिफिट के लिए है और कंस्ट्रक्टिव नोटिस ये कहता है कि भाई आउटसाइडर जो डील कर रहा है उसको पता होना चाहिए कि क्या है और अगर कोई डॉक्यूमेंट में फॉल है तो फिर कंपनी रेस्पॉन्सिबल नहीं होगी वो आदमी ही रेस्पॉन्सिबल होगा सो दैट इज द आंसर ऑफ योर क्वेश्चन 
Any other question? बाकी हम लोग जब डिटेल में डिस्कशन करेंगे तो आई थिंक यू विल गेट आंसर ऑफ ऑल ऑफ योर क्वेश्चन इट इज जस्ट द सिलेबस सो दैट यू हैव सम आइडिया कि हमें पढ़ना क्या है लाइक फ्रॉम दिस डिस्कशन यू ऑल गॉट द आइडिया दैट द कंपनी इज फॉर्म फॉर बिजनेस पर्पजेज बट देर आर अदर यू नो एंटिटीज बाई विच ऑल्सो यू कैन डू बिजनेस लाइक एल एल पी एंड पार्टनरशिप लेकिन एडवांटेजेस क्या है कंपनी के थ्रू बिजनेस करने के क्या डिसएडवांटेजेस हैं किस तरह से फॉर्म होती है कंपनी किस तरह से सेपरेट लीगल पर्सनालिटी है कंपनीज के डॉक्यूमेंट्स कौन से हैं इम्पोर्टेंट उनका क्या रिलीवेंस है किस तरह से फाइल करते हैं प्रमोटर्स क्या होता है अगर प्रमोटर्स कोई नेग्लिजेंस करता है या पर्सनल uh, गेन करता है उस केस में किस तरह से लाइबिलिटी होगी सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आई थिंक यू गॉट द आइडिया डायरेक्टर कौन होते हैं उनकी क्या रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी होती है अगर रेस्पॉन्स वो उनका रिलेशन भी फिड्यूशरी रिलेशनशिप अगर उसके में कुछ होता है तो वहाँ पे भी सिविल और क्रिमिनल एक्शन डायरेक्टर्स के अगेंस्ट हो जाता है बिकॉज मैंने कहा ना कि कंपनी लीगल सेंस में कंपनी जो सेपरेट लीगल पर्सनालिटी बट ऑल द एक्शन आर टेकन बाय नेचुरल पर्सन डेफिनेटली बाय डायरेक्टर्स टेक्स द ऑल द एक्शन एंड इन दैट सेंस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू फिक्स द लाइबिलिटी ऑफ द डायरेक्टर टू सेविंग द कंपनी फ्रॉम एनी टाइप ऑफ यू नो इलीगल एक्ट ऑफ इज डायरेक्टर्स एनी अदर क्वेश्चन गाइज ठीक है ओके सो फर्स्ट थ्री चैप्टर आपके वेरी वेरी कॉन्सेप्चुअल हैं फिर दो चैप्टर आपके बिल्कुल इंफॉर्मेटिव है फिर उसके बाद में सिक्स चैप्टर आपका फिर से कॉन्सेप्चुअल है बाकी के सेवन एट नाइन टेंथ इलेवन वी विल डिस्कस इन नेक्स्ट क्लास एंड उसके बाद में हम इंडिविजुअल टॉपिक्स पे डिस्कशन स्टार्ट कर देंगे ओके गुड लक गाइज बाय बाय सी यू सो थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर Thank you sir thank you sir thank you